tragic attack on Tunisian synagogue, three dead and 10 injured. In a chilling assault that has stunned Tunisia and the world, an annual Jewish pilgrimage at the historic uh, Gibra synagogue in the Jebra was tragically disrupted on May 9th. An armed onslaught by Wizram Khazari, a national guardsman, claimed Oh, excuse me, five lives, including his colleagues, two civilians, and three servicemen, and left dozens injured in its wake. The drama unfolded rapidly, with Ghazri neutralized by security forces in a mere two minutes of his arrival at the complex. The motive behind this heart-wrenching assault remains a mystery, as Tunisian authorities piece together the events leading up to the attack. Tunisian President Kai Syed convened an interfaith gathering after the attack, standing in solidarity with the Jewish community and vowing to ensure their safety. With investigations unfolding rapidly, four suspects have already been apprehended. The repercussions of this t attack reverberate not only in Tunisia's tourism industry, but also its vibrant Jewish community, leaving a nation in shock and a world watching closely. So I thought that this was important to talk about because this is one of this is a pretty major attack that's happened on a um jewish place of worship in north africa recently and this is a very historically important north african jewish site in fact um this is the same site where 20 people died in 2002 when al-qaeda blew up a truck um in in front of the same site um so this is a site that has like seen a lot of um, historical tension, right? And one thing that I thought was interesting was that the authorities have refused to label this a terrorist attack. And I don't, I, what do you think about that? I feel like that's kind of just political because they don't, in a lot of the press releases, they were talking about like, oh, we're not going to let people threaten the stability of Tunisia and, I think they're kind of doing it as a PR thing. They don't want to have an official labeled terrorist attack on their hands, like influence tourism and stuff. Because if this isn't an act of domestic terrorism, like, I don't know what is. Yeah, I can't tell for sure why they're not doing that. But if they're doing it for tourism, then shame on them. Shame on them. Like if they are basically throwing the their own Jewish people under the bus by by not calling this terrorism. It, again, I don't know, but if that's the reason, shame, shame. Um, because because it is terrorism, you know. Um, he, he, and here's the thing, they say they don't know the motivation. I mean, take a wild guess. It's a, it's a synagogue. What do you think the motivation is? I know, is? right? I mean, yeah. It's, it what seems you like you're about? just sticking your head in the sand if you're like refusing I mean, to I just, do, I, I don't know. I, I do understand to, to be responsible and not say anything without evidence, okay? But if you apply Occam's razor, what you can say to at least be responsible as a journalist is to say that the likely scenario is anti-Semitism. Yeah, you can yeah, say yeah. that. And then you're not going to be held responsible if it ends up being something else because you said the likely scenario. But given that we know why people attack synagogues, you could at least say what the likely motivation is, not the absolute certain, nothing is certain in life, but you could at least address that. And then like, what does it mean? Like we're not calling this terrorism because what, what was their reason? They, I don't know if they gave a reason. Let me pull up the report so I can remind myself um, about why they weren't calling it that. It was something weird. They just kept on referring to like that they're going to spare no effort to ensure the stability of the country and to protect like foreigners from attacks like this. Because there was a French citizen that was one of the ones that were killed. Hmm. Okay, well, this is, I don't know what to say. Yeah, um, Pakistan Defense Forces mentioning that they, Tunisia had a high number of uh, people who joined ISIS from there. Like this, Tunisia, even though it's one of the most moderate countries um, in Islam, it does have its fair share of radicals as well. It's kind of, yeah. Also, Morocco, for example, also Morocco is one of the most liberal Islamic countries, and it also has its fair share of radicals and terrorists, which is crazy. I know, it's interesting. Yeah.
Yeah. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.